Hey viewers, welcome back to the Noob Guide for Noobs. Um, as you can see, we have a major overhaul here on um, the, the, the UI. And we are going to play Vulcan today. So first we're going to discuss Vulcan's uh, abilities and, uh, well, not, not so much okay. abilities, the items, items that you go for. And in the next video, I will demonstrate how to play him. He has been remade pretty recently. This is how he normally looks, by the way. Um, yeah, I like to play him as a black guy. Don't know why. He just looks better that way. Anyhow, um, yeah, Vulcan is definitely not a carry. He is uh, not a support either. He is kind of a the herper derp Urshnumer. No, it really doesn't matter what he is. Uh, he's just fun to play and, well, all you need to know is that you shouldn't play him if you're playing for, for keeps, basically. Uh, although I did get a pentakill with him last week, so he can do a lot of damage, but it's very unlikely that you get multi kills with him. However, he does a decent amount of damage. He's a good pusher. Uh, he's reasonable in the other game modes other than uh, uh, conquest. For conquest, he's just pretty much not viable at all. Anyhow, uh, item or sorry, um, active wise. Uh, I would recommend Gerbil of Might, the uh, Gerbil of Inner Power, that is. Uh, Hand of the Gods, if you're going on Conquest, because, well, you can still play him, he's just not like a top tier pick. Uh, for the rest, uh, well, basically Purification Beats is not necessary, you have your ultimate for that. Age Amulet can come in handy, Creeping Curse can come in handy. You can pretty much go whatever the hell you want. And that is the great thing about someone who doesn't really have like this uh, specific goal in a, in a team. Because you can just derp around with him. You can do whatever the hell you want. So Blink really not that good unless you go Combat Blink. But yeah, you don't really need Combat Blink. Uh, Age Amulet, as I said, is pretty useful. Go for the left one. Last time I got confused between the two because this is uh, from the last patch, this split. I didn't know what, what they did. But the left one is the better one. Uh, it can be used while under crowd control effects. It's just better than having this one which doesn't give you crowd control effects. But you can move. Um, yeah, the, the thing is if you get stunned you normally take a lot of damage. So yeah, you want to immediately press that to be able to uh, prevent that damage. That is exactly what you want. So uh, starter item wise, yeah, it depends on what you want to build. You can build him tanky, which means he doesn't do a lot of damage, but he can stay alive for a lot longer. Mark of the Vanguard would then be your pick. Uh, if you are, however, going for, well, my approach, which is just full on mage, full damage, uh, not even thinking about defensive items, go for Vampiric Shroud. It's a good item to start with and it definitely uh, does you a lot of good. So yeah, you can stay in lane much longer and if you're if you know how to handle the skills you can you know, you can work with that pretty well. So um as I said you have two different builds. For your first build which I'm yeah well it, it, it's my favorite but uh, which um yeah, I really like it because my playstyle fits the build. My playstyle is to be defensive a lot of my towers do all the work basically in the early game and then in the later stage of the game all you have to do is just keep people in range of your towers so what you're going to need for that is obviously a lot of damage but you need gem of isolation you also need cooldown reduction so if you go to uh, cooldown reduction which is here you can immediately see well you can go for the shoes which gives you 15% cooldown reduction obviously the shoes of focus would be yours and then you can either go for Kronos Pendant which is my favorite to get the 25% or Breastplate of Valor which also has the 25% cooldown reduction uh, the combination of the two so these two or this with this will result in 40% cooldown reduction which is your maximum so, yeah, as I said, my personal favorite is Shoes with Kronos Pendant, because it just does an insane amount of damage. But it doesn't give you any defense, so if you're having trouble staying defensive in the early game, don't do this. Just go for the Breastplate of Valor, it's a valid choice, it's just not as high damage, but hey, who cares. Um, 
yeah, as I said, shoes that you go for, the shoes of focus, whatever build you want, because um, that cooldown reduction is major. Also, the movement speed is good enough. Uh, yeah, it will be a little bit higher with the defensive boots or with, well, the actual movement speed boots. But, yeah, it's good enough. And the cooldown reduction really helps out. So Doom Orb, yeah, I use it to get my pentakill, but it's not so much his item. Because, well, he is pretty easy to kill. He doesn't really have an escape. But, um, yeah, you, you can actually go for this and get the stacks pretty easily. Because your turrets, especially in the middle game, like get a lot of minion kills if you place them correctly. Uh, you can basically just use your 1 and your 2 to clear up an entire minion wave in one go. Um, yeah, Obsidian Shard, definitely a good late game item. Spear of the Magus, definitely available for you. You are not an auto attack hero, so Telkina's Ring, Demonic Grip, they don't count for you. Polynomicon, yeah, only if you want to have fun, but not if you're anywhere near serious, because it's just not good enough. Uh, Voidstone, yeah, definite must. Uh, focus the Voidstone, no matter whether you go the offensive or the defensive build, but this is all for the uh, offensive build. Skip the wall of, uh, of absolution, go for Bancroft's Talon and go for, well as I said, Gem of Isolation, uh, Kronos Pendant and then into Rod of Tehudi with Soul Reaver if you still have a spot available because you didn't go for the Doom Orb. If you did go for the Doom Orb and you have the stacks, obviously you're going to keep the stacks because that's 140 magical power. That is just insane. Um, yeah, plus the bonus from the Rod of Tehudi makes that an insane item. Uh, once you start losing stacks, so once you die basically, you uh, sell that and get the Soul Reaver if you can afford it in one go. Don't take it if you can only afford this, because then it pretty much equals out. You don't have the uh, MP5, you just have the mana. It's not as good. Uh, but if you can afford this fully, yeah, go for it, because it's awesome. So for the rest, yeah, just shop for what you want. Uh, I personally, as I said, go for the heavy magical power. So not Bancroft's Talon first. I go for uh, Rod of Tehudi probably as my third item. First item would be, uh, well, this, Vampire Trout, then into Shoes, uh, shoes of Focus, Doom Orb, and then probably Obsidian Shard, depending on what they build. Either Obsidian Shard or Void Stone. Um, Voidstone is still good, and then straight into Rod of Tehudi, Gem of Isolation, the big items, and then after that, if you're doing well, Bancroft's Talon. If you're not doing well, yeah, you might as well give up the, the tactic, because it only works if you're doing well. You can't really get, afford all these items if you're not doing well, so might as well just go for defensive items then. But for the rest, attack speed, lifesteal, they don't matter. Penetration, as I said, Voidstone is good. Spear of the Magus is good, but only if people are uh, building a lot of magic resist. Obsidian Shard, always. And uh, never go for the Shoes of the Magi. You don't need them, and the cooldown reduction is much, much better. So anyhow, defensive items for this build, uh, and all of these items, completely no-go. So only the cooldown items, the penetration items and the power items, that's what you should go for if you want to build him offensively. Then, if you want to build him defensively. Because this is a much more common build, it's also not as fun to play, and I play him because I like playing him. I don't play him because he's good, because he's not good. So um, yeah, then you would go for the defensive griefs. Although I would still recommend going for the Shoes of Focus, because the Shoes of Focus just provide you so much control on that early game. It, it provides you a huge boost in everything, so damage, cooldown reduction, and move speed. And here you only get move speed and protection, and that is not nearly as good. The cooldown reduction is really uh, valuable, the, also the damage is really valuable. The protections, yeah, not so much. If you get caught, you get caught and you die. That's the way it goes as a, well, <laughs> aggressive person. But uh, anyway, um, good items here for him are, of course, Breastplate of Valor, already mentioned that. Sovereignty is good and Hide of the Nemean Lion. So depending on whether it's one guy that's doing well, Hide of the Nemean Lion, or if your entire team is just 
fucking it up against multiple uh, physical damage dealers, go for Sovereignty. Because, well, and if you want to do some kind of a hybrid build, go for Wall of Absolution uh, with Breastplate of Valor. Because this one provides you with the cooldown reduction, this one provides you with some magical power at least. And it, it, it makes you hit a little bit harder. But Sovereignty is only when your team is just screwing up against multiple physical damage dealers. Doesn't matter who they are. They, uh, it, it will work against just about anyone. Uh, the same goes for Witchstone, by the way. Witchstone is also a good item if the team is screwing up. But yeah, well, I've said that so many times already. I think you can dream that by now. Um, from these items, it depends who you're up against. If you're up against a lot of stunts, go for Magi's Blessing. So this one. The uh, hard crowd control effect absorption is super powerful against, for example, Ymir. Because... Um, as long as you don't get stunned, you can get out of just about anything. Plus, yeah, the, the things, the, the, the stats aren't really good, but the 40% crowd control reduction makes that your, um, yeah, your, your uh, movement basically gets interrupted less, and that is just good. And the other one, yeah, I don't really like it, because if I want to go for uh, the extra stats on this, I wouldn't go this item. I mean the 20% cooldown, uh, sorry, crowd control reduction, as well as the little bit of physical and magical protection. Yeah, that's just no good. If I want something like that, I would go Height of uh, uh, Leviathan, or rather this one. Um, yeah, this one also has the 20% crowd control reduction, but it has more physical and magical protection. And in this case, you can even get more protection. So you can get up to 65, 65, which is way better than 35 or no, sorry. Yeah, that's 35, 35, this one. And this one, 15, 15. So you just buy that for the bubble that you get that absorbs a uh, hard crowd control effect, which is a stun or a knock up or something like that. Something where you cannot move anymore and cast any spells. Anyhow, um, yeah, I will have to get to the messages in a moment, <laughs> but I'll do that after the game. Um, for the rest, yeah, the uh, Void Stone into either Void Stone or Focus Void Stone is still a good choice. So even if you're building defensively or hybrid, it is always a good item. It's kind of a must-have whatever you do. And then for the rest, go either Bulwark of Hope, Stone of Gaia, uh, Stone of Gaia only if you're really having trouble. And then uh, you can even uh, start off with the Greaves, of course, but yeah, as I said, it's not a good choice. So those are your two main options, Stone of Gaia, Bulwark of Hope. Bulwark of Hope should be your first choice. It's just way better. And you can also go for Idol of Concentration if you're really having trouble with stunts. Although, I do recommend that unless you're fighting Anubis, that you go for the bubble. So the Magi's Blessing. So then health, yeah, this is basically all useless. It has been for a while, but the only um, health item that is actually worth it would be Gauntlet of Thieves. But yeah, you need so many stacks on that. And normally if you're a defensive character, getting the stacks is a real problem. So yeah, there's really not a whole lot you can do. Um, yeah, you can of course go for uh, health items as well, and if you're going for a hybrid build, go for the Gem of Isolation, go for the Warlock Sash. Warlock Sash of course as your first item then, because you're going to have some trouble stacking up a hundred stacks, but it can be done. It can be done in any game mode, and um, yeah, by doing so you get a huge boost in health. So even though most of these items are completely worthless, uh, the Warlock Sash may still prove useful. Mystical Mark only if you're in a solo lane in Conquest and you want to push more, even though, yeah, you're already a pushing dude, so you don't really need that, but, yeah, well, it provides you with a lot of good stats, uh, physical protection, a high physical protection, as well as a good chunk of health, and all in all, it does a lot of damage uh, to the minions, so, yeah, that's why it's reasonable. For the rest, HP 5, Aura, yeah, you can, you can browse through them, they're okay, I guess, but, um, yeah, you don't really need them. You, you can use the aura items like Sovereignty and Voidstone to help your team. Also Witchstone. Uh, magical protection. There is no magical protection aura. So just go for something that benefits you the best. So Bulwark of Hope. 
Uh, Voidstone, well, Voidstone can help allies get um, more damage done. And then Stone of Gaia. So, yeah, just be selfish in the magical department. Be generous in the physical department, I would like to say. Because in the physical department, it is mostly sovereignty. Uh, Hide of Nemean Lion and Breastplate of Valor that, uh, that rule the day here. And two of those three, uh, as well as maybe Witchstone, and then three of those four actually provide some assistance to the team, damage-wise or otherwise. This one has an aura. The uh, Sovereignty has an aura. I guess Mystical Mark has an aura. And uh, Hide of Nemean Lion does damage back to your opponents. So if you take damage, your allies don't have to damage your target as much. I guess that's helping as well. Yeah, that's really all I have to say about it. So two different builds. I'm only going to demo my favorite build, which is full offensive. And that's what makes him fun to play. Because, well, if there's no risk, there's no fun. And, um, yeah, well, I'll see you then. Hope you enjoyed. And I will see you next time. GG.